The Blue Hole is a daunting 120-meter sinkhole, notorious for one of the highest diver fatality rates in the world. But Stephen Keenan was a man who lived for the thrill and never shied away from a challenge. So what happens when the master of the depths enters an underwater cathedral at the edge of the Red Sea? Stick around as we uncover the chilling details of Stephen Keenan's last descent and reveal what went wrong for the seasoned diver. Stephen Keenan, or Steve as his friends called him, was an adventurer who sought out places few dared to explore. Originally a microbiology student, he transitioned to becoming a freediving instructor, trading his lab coat for a wetsuit. Teaching across the globe, from Egypt to Spain to the Philippines, he inspired countless students with his love for diving and planned to follow his passion for the rest of his life. However, fate had a different plan for him. Stephen was born on December 1, 1977, near Dublin, Ireland. From a young age, he was drawn to nature, often swimming and snorkeling with his dad at dawn. Always on the lookout for his next adventure, Keenan started his journey through the swampy waters of northern Congo. But the ocean had always held a special place in his heart, and his passion for scuba diving drew him to Dahab, Egypt, a mecca for diving enthusiasts. It was there that he discovered freediving, a form of underwater diving that relies on breath holding until resurfacing, rather than the use of breathing equipment like scuba gear. This new pursuit quickly turned into an obsession. For years, Keenan and his friends pushed each other to dive deeper, turning it into a friendly competition, and he even went on to set all three Irish national records in freediving. But after experiencing a severe blackout during one of his dives and narrowly escaping death, Stephen developed a strong interest in becoming a safety diver himself. His extensive experience as a free diver made him renowned as an exceptional safety diver, not just for his skill, but also for his uncanny ability to identify divers at risk. Among the divers Steve closely monitored during competitions was 25-year-old Alessia Zacchini. Determined and fiercely ambitious, Alessia was on a quest to shatter the world record in free diving. And in 2017, during a break in the competition season, the two began training together. After massive success at the Vertical Blue competition in the Bahamas, Alessia and Steve set their sights on the most dangerous dive, the Blue Hole in Dahab, Egypt. With a grim history of up to 200 fatalities in 15 years, the Blue Hole is the deadliest dive site on the planet, and countless divers have lost their lives attempting to swim through the arch, an 85-foot-long tunnel situated 184 feet beneath the surface. Yet, Alessia aimed to be the second woman to conquer the Blue Hole and break every world free diving record. And it was Keenan's expertise as a safety diver that became crucial in preparing for the descent. They spent countless hours training, perfecting their skills, and building the trust needed for such a dangerous feat. With his extensive experience in organizing crossings of the arch, including his own successful attempt in 2016, Keenan was the natural choice to lead the planning. He carefully selected a support team for Alessia, bringing in eight experienced free divers and instructors as part of the safety team, and three additional scuba divers to capture the crossing on camera. Every member of the team knew exactly what they were supposed to do. But Alessia's plan was challenging, to say the least. She would descend 170 feet using the rope to guide her, and then enter the arch, swimming horizontally for 98 feet. Upon reaching the other side of the arch, a safety line would be positioned in the middle, with Steve waiting at its end to meet her. The expected duration of the dive was estimated to be approximately 2 minutes and 40 to 50 seconds. On July 22, 2017, Steven's bravery would face its ultimate challenge as the team prepared for the crucial dive. But when D-Day came around, conditions weren't ideal. Visibility was poor, and the winds were so high that they pushed the water around creating currents that could easily push a free diver off course. Unsurprisingly, Keenan took on the critical role of the first safety diver during the dive. He was set to start his dive 40 seconds after Alessia, aiming to meet her at 180 feet as she exited the arch. To maximize safety, a buoy equipped with a rope was strategically placed at the exit of the arch. This setup was crucial for the dive's success. It was Steve's task to be at the buoy, ready and waiting for Alessia as she emerged from the arch. This precaution was vital in case she failed to spot the rope or needed help locating it. Once they reached the surface, Steve's next task was to signal Lily, the second safety diver. He would do this by pulling the rope with two strong tugs. 
This way, Lily would know that everything was going according to plan and could start her descent down to 82 feet. Lily was in charge of watching Alessia during the final distance of her ascent, while the third safety diver would then look after Steve during the final part of his ascent. Everything was meticulously planned for this thrilling adventure. But even the best laid plans can crumble in the face of unexpected twists. What happened next was a series of small things not going as planned. Alessia started her dive perfectly, descending as scheduled and entering the arch, where two tech divers were filming her. Steve had instructed her to swim close to the reef wall on her right to avoid the divers on her left. Following these instructions, Alicia hugged the reef wall. It was her first time crossing the arch, so she didn't notice any change in light indicating she had exited. She kept following the wall, unknowingly swimming away from the rope in the middle. This was the first hiccup. The second issue arose because she was negatively buoyant at 50 to 55 meters, causing her to swim faster than expected and exit the arch sooner than planned. Now, here's the critical part. Steve, the first safety diver, was supposed to meet her at the exit. A buoy with a rope was positioned there, maintained by someone on the surface. Steve's job was to be there a few seconds ahead, make a sound to signal Alessia, and guide her to the rope. The plan was meticulous, time to the second. Lily started Steve's countdown, but suddenly he asked for 10 more seconds. Lily didn't ask any questions. After all, Steve was the boss, the organizer. So, he got his 10 seconds, but this delay was critical. By the time he reached the bottom, Alessia had drifted far from the rope. Steve made a massive sprint to catch her, captured on video by the tech divers. Assessing the situation, Steve decided returning to the rope wasn't an option. Instead, in open water, he positioned himself in front of Alessia, and they began their ascent. Alessia, who was without fins, swam independently at first while Steve followed with his biffins. A photographer at 40 meters saw something was amiss and captured the ascent. Towards the end, Steve grabbed Alessia's hips to help her swim. Alessia reached the surface conscious, perhaps slightly hypoxic or shocked. However, currents had pushed them far away. In Dahab terms, they ended up at the saddle, far from the arch exit. It took a while for Alessia to realize Steve was face down, unresponsive. She turned him over and called for help, but a noisy group of snorkelers nearby delayed the team's response. Panic set in as they searched everywhere, wondering what had happened and how they ended up so far off course. The team quickly located the two and a safety diver started rescue breaths upon reaching them. Soon, two more divers joined, deploying a buoy equipped with oxygen to aid in Steve's rescue. Despite their valiant efforts, their attempts fell short. Quickly, they brought Steve to shore, where CPR was administered and an ambulance arrived to rush him to the medics. Tragically, Steve was pronounced dead shortly after arriving at the hospital. He suffered an in-water blackout during the final 32 feet of their ascent, but Stephen used his last moments of consciousness to ensure Alessia's safety. To this day, Alessia honors him by continuing to compete in free diving while fellow divers organize an underwater vigil where each participant holds their breath for 39 seconds, symbolizing Steve's 39 years of life. That's it for this video. What do you think was the most gripping moment of Steve Keenan's final dive? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this story interesting, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tales. Thanks for watching.